the Wonder Woman 1984 trailer has arrived. The Birds of Trey... God. <laughs> the Birds Who's of Trey? Trey? I don't know. <laughs> or the Birds of Trey, like, are you being served a fine dining adventure? Here's Quill. Some, <laughs> some cornichon. <laughs> I'm a little... Ha- I'm a little... Just to keep I'm a little... Face. I'm a little pleased because this means that that was... I think that was funny enough to leave it in, so I'm not going to edit any of that out. The Birds of Prey promotional machine is heating up, and DC Universe releases a Stargirl teaser before deleting it and uh, releasing a shorter Stargirl teaser. (laughs) All that and so damn much more. But first, I'm David C. Robertson. This is my trusty co-host, Jason Goss. Hello! And we are DC On Screen. This is the podcast where we discuss the DC Comics multiverse on film and television, give honest opinions on projects that are coming in past, and believe that every version of a property is valid, even if we do not want it to be. If it's been released, it is fair game, so beware of spoilers, and welcome to the show. I'm still thinking of the, the tray of birds and fair game now. Oh. But, okay. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Pheasant! Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll put a pin in that. All right, if you we got are a lot of stuff to cover, yeah, we do. If we are a patron, if we are, if you are a Patreon uh, supporter, you've got a little treat coming up. We just recorded uh, our reaction to the Ghostbusters Afterlife, both the U.S. and the international version mm-hmm. trailers. Um, I won't even say what we or how we felt about it. Just, just, just there you go. And if you want to hear that, you're going to have to go to Patreon and, and throw us five bucks because you know. Yeah, if you know us, you probably know how we feel about it. Yeah, you you probably see two sad lumps masturbating in a corner somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> um, Patreon dot com slash TC on screen. Two <laughs> wilted potatoes dreaming of better days. <laughs> oh no, I'm sad. <laughs> All right. No spoilers. We enjoyed the trailers. Go check it out. Yeah, it's this it's a fun conversation. Yeah. Uh over uh to Apple Podcasts. Uh we, <laughs> we are trying to get to 100 uh 100 ratings. I'm not even saying ratings and reviews, just 100 ratings. Uh by the end of the year, we are mm-hmm. at 82 right now. Uh so please go go give us a a rating and a review. Uh, Chicken Chaser. Chicken Chaser leaves us a five-star review and That's a, a good Yeah, I know says, Merry Christmas, here's my review, finally. I have been listening to DC On Screen for quite a while, was looking for something to get news on BVS. You guys have been with us for a long time. It has Um, been a while, yeah. uh, Dave and Jason hit all of the important topics and even some of the non-important ones. Just kidding. But outside of the podcast, they are also very engaged with their fans, even posted a topic about which Superman is your Superman, and then went through and talked about a lot of the posts, which was pretty cool. So if you are looking for a great DC news source with a bit of mirth and friendly hosts, this one is the one for you. Thank you, man. Or lady. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what gender is chasing that chicken. Yeah, you know, I... I, I'm just, but I do know, appreciate it. And he, uh, he or she is right. We will totally geek out with you uh, in general. Yeah, absolutely. And though I got an interesting question here. Um, <laughs> this is this is a, an example of how you know use activities on unrelated apps may may wind up uh, causing some interesting crossover. Um, Tom Barnes messaged me and says, "Saw on your Goodreads." Oh. Yeah, that you've been reading Super Fans by Pat Flynn. In Chapter 11, Flynn instructs us to give your fans a name, like Trekkie or Trekkers, but I have never heard you or Jason refer to your fans as anything really. Are you planning on giving us DC On Screen listeners a fun name? Mm. It's been like almost five years, and I don't. I think we may have discussed what you what we might call our fans at some point, our listeners. I don't like the word fans. But you know, because no, I can't, I, mean, I, I I would go with listeners more. Yeah, um, I don't. I can't bring myself to feel like I have a fan. No, no, that feels weird. But it does um, feel weird. But but listeners, I can get behind. And uh, no, I don't have a good term. Do you have a good term? Um, I the only thing I think we've ever said was on screeners. Yeah, do you see on screeners? Um, I think we've used flippantly at times. I, I don't think we can. We don't have to stick with something. That, you know about our name. Like what? What? What is? What is the? Uh, what is that guy? Um, that guy that we both listen to and you listen to a lot more. Uh Cummins. Uh Dan Cummins? Yeah, what does he call his people? Lizard people? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's uh there's the uh space lizard group of oh, yeah. actual 
Patreon supporters, and then there's the uh, the general cult of the curious, as it as he calls it. Oh, the, okay. The overall listeners, yeah, but that doesn't. It's his got good show, branding on that show. Yeah, his show is called Time Sucks, so it doesn't really have anything to do with uh, you know the name of the show. No, and um, there. my favorite example. My favorite example is this kid named uh, Danny Gonzalez on YouTube, and um, he sort of flippantly called his fan base Greg. Nice. So, but the, but yeah, in his ep- in his shows, he's just always like, "What's up, Greg? Uh, let's do this." And like the arbitrary nature of it. That's, yeah, that's and pretty he's sweet. got T-shirts to say, "I am Greg." <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Like I'm somewhat tempted to just say, like we we will call our fan base Tim, you know, <laughs> and, in homage to Monty Python and, and the Holy Grail. But you know. That I mean, also we seems couldn't too... pick like a name from DC because it it shows some favoritism that we right. uh, it, it it wouldn't make sense for us. We we kind of love a lot of these things. We can't even mm-hmm. pick a, a thing that's tendentially Marvel because we love a lot of Marvels as well. Um, yeah, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want to do that. No. It kind of it kind of doesn't make sense for us to name check something. We just kind of have to come something uh, come something out of the blue. Yeah, I mean, should we like have people write in and tell us what they think, or should we like, come up with like I don't know? five or six names and have people on our Facebook group and Twitter vote. What do you think? Eh, that's a tough call. Hey, if anybody writes in, um, we'll, we'll just call that part of the, uh, the voting. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, we'll tally it up some way, but yeah, let us know what you want to be called. You know, that's what I'm going to do. If I ever have kids, I'm just going to call it it until it gets to a certain age and be like, what do you want to be called? I, it, it <laughs> seems silly, but I, I do that though. I, um, Legally was not allowed to do that with my child, or otherwise uh-huh. I probably would have employed that method. Right. Um, I do that with pets. Um, anytime I've had a dog or a, or, well, I've only ever owned dogs, but uh, anytime <laughs> I've had dogs, I, I literally kind of, they're just dog until I feel like they've mm-hmm. in some way told me their name. Uh, guitars, the same way. Um, I kind of let the guitar describe to me what I think its name should be in a way. Right. I don't know. It just feels right. It, like it clicks. And, uh, Cars, the same thing, except inexplicably, the car I'm currently driving, uh, 2012 Altima, has never told me what its name is, so it's just called my car. Mm. So I don't know, either I'm I'm losing my creative focus, or um, that, that car is just fucking obstinate. I don't know. Right. I lean towards the latter. I've had nicknames for the other cars. And every guitar I own has a name. I, it, it's... Yeah. My wife does that. My wife names every, every inanimate object she can think of. <laughs> that I has any relevance in her life. It seems to really just be those things. But you know, she I have categories, uh, I guess. I, I got a new I got an iPad and um she asked me last night what I was gonna name it. And I was like, it never even occurred to me. <laughs> it's called my iPad. I mean, my my computer's name is Prometheus. But oh, <laughs> naturally. Um I don't know. And then just like as I was talking to you just now, suddenly I realized what I should have said and what my iPad, iPad's name will now be. Mm-hmm. Maxi. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> or just Max. And somebody says later, like, oh, yeah, the last of its iPad. So Max iPad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't have come up with that on my own. Not completely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Max iPad. That's good. That's, yeah. It, it takes some banging around. I, I don't know. There's the good names happen organically to some extent to me. So that's to that. Cool. To that point, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, post links to the uh, to the Facebook and and whatever, and y'all can go and become part of the group, and we'll talk about what we want to be called, and it'll be a whole thing. <laughs> Thanks for writing in. Uh, <laughs> what was it, Tom? <laughs> I'm, yeah, Tom. I became very like very uh, paranoid that it it wasn't Tom. It was something like Brian. Oh yeah, no. Uh, the the idea of naming in your brain had gone yeah. into some other place, and you were like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, All right. The only proposal I have is D citizens. Yeah, but that's not really not really linked to us. Yeah, that's my point. Hmm. The citizens. Yeah, I can see it. All right. You want to get get the actual news? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. Let's 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 get to Joker's latest numbers. It's still around, so we're gonna talk about the numbers. Uh, Good God, it is sitting at one billion fifty five million seven hundred twelve thousand eight hundred fourteen. That's it worldwide domestic. We're talking about three hundred thirty two million one hundred twelve thousand eight hundred fourteen. So um, it has passed BVS, the domestic box office. It has passed Aladdin, 
in the international box office. Nice. It is the sixth highest grossing movie of the year. Um, now, it was announced that starting Friday on the 6th, uh, December 6th, which, you know, we we're well past that, uh, Joker was going back to IMAX screens. So you still have, like, by the time this drops, you'll have, like, two days to go mm. check that out for the last yeah. time. Um, for anyone who cares, it's been nominated for four Golden Globe uh, Golden Globe nominations. Uh, best Picture, Drama, Best Actor in a Motion Picture, Best Director, Best Original Score. Uh, <laughs> All the top tier ones. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, got, like, seven total nominations for the Critics' Choice Awards. Like best picture, best actor, best adapted screenplay, best cinematography, best production design, best hair and makeup, and best score. We don't know what it's going to get for Academy Awards. I don't care anything about awards. I know a lot of people do, and I know it matters in the industry. So there you go. There's that news bit, and good lord, people are loving on this movie. Yeah, I I would like it if it came across with a couple of them, just because it matters in the industry. Mm-hmm. But for me personally, no, it's done it. It's made its mark. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, home video release. We've got uh, December 17th in digital and DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K comes January 7th. Yeah, I saw the digital. Just because on a whim, I was at a stoplight and was like, when can I buy this? <laughs> yeah, it, that makes me mad that it's going to wait until January 7th. Because, See, I don't want, I don't even want physical copies anymore. It's just I media do. I have to keep up with. I like keeping up with it. I like displaying it. I want it in my home, and I want it in time for Christmas. I get it. I'm a, I'm that way with books. Like if I read something, I want it to be on a shelf so I can go back to it and be like, no, I know. Because I also, when I read stuff, I remember where stuff is in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, like I will literally look at the left or the right of the page because I remember it being there. Mm-hmm. I, that's how I want to experience the book. Eh, for movies, I don't have that same experience. Well, I can just watch the thing and I, I want to have access to it, but I don't necessarily need it that way. Well, I want the Blu-ray. It's not tangible. Or, actually, I want the 4K Blu-ray, so I just had to put it on my Amazon wish list and hope that someone gets it for me for Easter. Mm, nice. So I can, you know, celebrate the resurrection of my Lord and Savior with a psychopathic clown. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Whom he would forgive. Whom he would forgive, yeah. Um, <laughs> the Wonder Woman 1984 trailer. You want to just go ahead and talk about that? <laughs> going, going right into forgiving characters. Wonder Woman 1984 trailer. <laughs> <laughs> going into magnanimous peoples mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got maxwell lord welcome to the future life is good but it could be better and why not all you have to do is want it think about having everything you've ever wanted and we've and we've got him so 80s as a message absolutely and uh i mean he's looking like freaking trump oh yeah he's got a very and, trump uh, and also and and he to be completely fair he's looking like maxwell lord yeah like a true uh, Max, what? Like he's even got the haircut from. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah. So okay, I to be like this trailer looks awesome, but uh, here's the thing. What's your big butt? Okay, well, okay, I wasn't gonna go into my big butt. I know it sounded like that for a second, but I will go ahead and go into my big butt if that's what you want. Uh, <laughs> Sound like what you're leaning to. So let's let's do that. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Backwards. I, I, eventually. Uh, Love the music. I was actually, you know, a, I, I was not aware of, of Blue Monday. I didn't, uh, somehow, I love 80s music. I don't know how it slipped by me. Oh, it's a good song. Um, it's one like of the few a, 80s songs I've heard you say yay to. Yeah, a lot of it's like Cure, Talking Heads, and then random songs that I actually liked. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the uh, the random songs I actually like category. Also, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I think Orgy and our youths. Did a cover of Blue Monday that brought my attention to it, and then I went back and listened to the original. Like, oh yeah, no, the originals, the originals better. Mm-hmm. Um, you did like a neo pop version of it. Uh, thank you for telling me this song exists. I will do the original. I appreciate you very much. Yeah, here's your. Uh, I'll I'll stamp your card. Here's one free. Blah blah blah, and uh, out the door. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I'll I'll go ahead and hit the butts. Yeah, hit the butts. Uh, all right, um, and this is a butt I've talked about before. Uh huh. Um, it was a, it was kind of a, it was a butt, definitely a butt in the first Wonder Woman movie. I was afraid it was going to be a butt here, and it looks like it is. The um, whimsically slap happy villain, like the villain who is just so utterly evil and so self aware and happy to be evil. <laughs> the well, non conflicted villain. 
I would argue that you didn't get there until the last 15 minutes of the first movie. Mm -hmm. And we don't necessarily know we're, we're going there right now. Well, we it looks like we were definitely going there with Maxwell Lord, who's basically... It's, it's weird, because I feel like uh, between Cheetah and Maxwell Lord, they are two different set, two different parts of the Jim Carrey Riddler from Batman Forever. Because oh, yeah, it's, the... Uh, well, it's... Is is Cheetah more the Jim Carrey Riddler, or is she more the Iron Man 3, uh, what's his name? They're the same character to me. They're Jamie Foxx as Electro. They are Aldrich Killian in Iron Man 3. They're, That's his name. Yes. Yeah. Um, they're, uh, they're, you know, Edward Nigma in Batman Forever. Like, the, the nerdy, repressed, I never get anything nerdy, that I want. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not the, who I want to be The character Black Swan kind of thing. Who befriends or befriends or looks up to the hero and then tries to destroy them later uh when they get all you know cool I, i've yeah. seen a lot, of, a lot of people bring up michelle pfeiffer in in uh in, in batman returns that'll also work um uh, especially with the cheetah motif but yeah, at yeah. The same, yeah I'm, I'm still just going eh, as a as a trope i, hate I get trope. it i, I hate kind that of also want to kind of trust Kristen wig a little bit I I want to like Kristen Wiig. I want to like what she's doing. I know she's got the chops. I know she can pull it off. I even laughed at her little line about how she falls in love over and over again. Yeah. Um, oh, dude, on on screen, she's compelling as hell. She is. But I, I have no I, immediate issue with her, per se. Just like, I don't blame Jim Carrey for what happened in Batman Forever. I don't blame Jamie Foxx <laughs> for what happened in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I don't blame any of these people for what happened. I just, no, but just to some extent, those were... And she is also an experienced actor who sh- should know better to some extent when their role is being taken in a certain direction. Mm-hmm. But I also, there are moments where Jamie Foxx and Jim Carrey faltered in their role choices. Mm. Um, Kristen Wiig, I feel like, has been less a party to that. I feel like she's been more responsible in what she wants to do. And that lends me a little bit of, uh, I- I'm giving her a little bit of leash. Based on that, I I give her no leash. Everyone's uh, open to failure, and I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say Jim Carrey's choice was a failure. He made a shit ton of money doing Batman Forever, and he was beloved for it. Like Batman Forever was not the problem. Batman Robin was. Everyone everyone cites Batman and Robin as having the bat nipples. No one remembers that Batman Forever had the shit. (laughs) Batman Forever had bat nipples. No one remembers that. No, it just focused on him later. Everyone Um, complains that Tommy Lee Jones was trying to be the the Joker or something, and I'm like. Yeah, no, but Jim Carrey was, was silly as shit. He didn't even know he was trying to be. He was just trying to make his kids happy is what he was trying to do. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, I, I am a little concerned about that. I, I, it, I've seen, uh, some of the, some of the, uh, design art and stuff. And there's been some talk that Cheetah will eventually become like full blown Cheetah. Uh, I hope she does. Cause all we're seeing so far is her in the, like the Cheetah, uh, jacket and and skirt and stuff like yeah. we, we haven't really seen her like actually become a cheetah. Now I, I don't genuinely know... uh, like one of my only problems with the trailer, and it's not really a problem. Uh, um, I should note, I should say, uh, mm-hmm. is that it it really doesn't give you a lot about the story yet. No, there's it, it shows it you some does. of the pieces, but we don't know where they are on the board. Like we've got Maxwell Lord. It looks like he is psychically projecting through that giant transmitter. And he maybe he is magically imbued with what I would assume uh, Cheetah has obtained for him, a crystal. I, I, uh, it also uh, looked like, yeah. it also kind of looks like she's one of those people who might obtain this on her own sidebar. And, you know, with, with Cheetah, traditionally, hasn't it been that once she, like, she gets that power kind of half accidentally and, and stumbles into it? I think she was cursed in the comics. See, I've seen that, and I've also seen her being like a Indiana Jones gone feline. Well, kind of there, that too, but yeah, I think there was an element of she was eh, his comics. There's so many different versions, <laughs> yeah, especially for <laughs> kind of a B character in a lot of ways, like Cheetah. Yeah, I mean, who, by the yeah. way, Snyder at the at this point is playing as an A character. Like, it's it, there's a lot to do there. Who is uh, Scott Snyder in the actual comics in oh, Justice okay. League? The, like, the Doom Wars right now. I mean, she's strong. That's why Wonder Woman needs that armor, man. It's because Cheetah can actually rip through Wonder Woman's flesh. Oh, yeah. No, she's uh, um, she's kind of the epitome of the Predator in a, in a lot of ways. So if this crystal is giving everybody their desires, I'm assuming that's how Chris Pine comes back. Yeah, it's a good supposition. Because it 
it seems like she wants him to be there. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be experiencing things um, as almost like a like an imaginary best friend kind of thing. Except the one moment in the trailer where he actually punches a guy. Yeah, he's actively punching people. Um, yeah. What I enjoy about this trailer, though, is like everything else. Like, literally everything else. I love that Steve Trevor is, like, experiencing the world in the place that she was in yeah, in the first movie. that he's brought into it. He's like, the oh, fish out of water art. here. Oh, that's yeah. just a garbage can. That's just a garbage can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, 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 my favorite part of this entire trailer, it's a stupid moment and it made me laugh in a way that tiara? I'm not sure I'm supposed to laugh at. No. Nope. No. Oh. It was when he hands over his watch to her and I'm like, uh -huh. oh, that's one of those stupid fucking early version digital watches. Uh huh. <laughs> when I that's was a funny. kid. That's funny. Uh, like, it's the kind of thing now that you wouldn't even see in like an antique watch dealership. That's funny. It yeah, has, uh, to me, it has like a uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, like a uh, Douglas Adams feel to it. Like, oh, you know, at first they all wanted digital watches kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that. That's funny. I uh, Yeah, I just saw her throw the tiara and I just laughed. It was just like, I know I should, I should feel like that's stupid, but I don't. No. I, I'm just like, yay. No, I'm good with that. Uh, everything I've seen, man. Every, it looks all like, of her action scenes were fantastic. I saw someone point out it looks like she was just like grappling the sky. And uh, th this was before the the part where she's like riding lightning, mm -hmm. and um, someone pointed that out, and we're like, what is she grabbing hold of here? And then someone was like, the invisible jet, dumbass. I was like, oh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then it made me wonder if uh, if she and and uh, Chris Pine are in the invisible jet when they're like flying through those like fireworks or whatever it is. Nice. Uh, yeah, man. I just, I, I, it looks, it looks a lot. I like a lot of fun at the very least. Um, despite my issues with the villains and the reason I said they were too broken, broken up into, into, uh, Jim Carrey from, uh, Batman forever is because if you'll recall in Batman forever, Jim Carrey or the Riddler had a, uh, a device that let, you know, him beam virtual signals into everybody's brains to get to show them what they wanted to see or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, they just split up those, those two, ver those two, or they split up those two sides of, of the, uh, the Carrey, uh, coin. Wait, the coin was two faced. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Riddler, Two Face, the coin with an uh -huh. enigma. Wait, yeah, no, what just happened here? With a bit of Pfeiffer, yeah, and a cat broke the Gordian knot, and now we're into Watchmen, and oh my God, what's happened? Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. But the Golden Eagle costume, we got the Golden Eagle costume with the wings and the, <laughs> yeah. and the helmet, and <laughs> goddamn right we did, and some serious. Uh, this this isn't a thing that requires uh, supposition. Like some serious 1980s effects that Can were I... super nostalgic and fun to watch in a way. Absolutely. And but... they also kind of refined them. Like they gave them an HD version of it. Mm -hmm. Everything with this with the gold with the, with the freaking lasso. The, la the lasso of truth just looks oh. fantastic. By the way, the lasso being able to do that trick where she's using it as like a pummel. Uh -huh. oh, God, it's so good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And and like I said earlier, she's riding freaking lightning. Her father's Zeus. Why the hell couldn't <laughs> <Yeah>. she do that? <laughs> What's well, one of her? They're all her parents in a way. <laughs> oh, and kind of oh, and I had to retweet this. I had uh, someone wrote. Uh -huh. <laughs> so someone took a uh, found the gif of her like lassoing the lightning, and uh, and and and, and uh, retweeted that and said Donna Troy can't relate. <laughs> no fuck yes. <laughs> oh my gosh that was fantastic yes. fantastic all right so they <clears throat> excuse me uh there i saw you a number of people fan phlegm out oh, of your, uh, you know i've been sick the last couple of days out of your chest yeah that's, i mean not just fan uh, phlegm just phlegm just no it's it's the phlegm. weight of all the amazing geeking things <clears throat> that have happened just mm -hmm. weighing on your soul and lungs yeah that's apparently. that's that's what I it think. was like the um, the pluralism of DC's on screen capabilities right now. Do you think I could, do? You, do you think I could sue for that? Oh God, no, no, you're fine. Oh, okay, they'll like, never win. <laughs> they'll bury you in court. Right? Like, Hell, they'll turn on you. You'll be in prison by the time it's over. DC gave me smoker's cough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I hooked up Flem in the shower, and it was Batman shaped. It was tar, but in a Batman shape. All right, so. Uh, yeah. 
I am I'm I'm pretty excited about Wonder Woman 1984. It looks pretty great. I, I've seen some people saying that they're just ripping off Ragnarok, and to those people, I say I would like to make you some soup and stir it with a used butt plug. <laughs> I get it. I get the sentiment being like, oh my god, they ripped off this one thing somebody did. There's so many fucking things that people are doing by so many directors and creators. Yeah, I mean, are we going to say... Genuinely, when I saw the 1984 effects pulling out, my first thought was Taiki Watiti. You know what my first thoughts were? I don't hold that against it. I just thought like, oh yeah, no, that's that's really fun. We're playing with some themes. Like They have it multicolored. They have it neon and multicolored like the 80s, but those 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 credits like flying in like that that's that's straight donner superman oh yeah you're right it is god damn it's been so long but yeah you're right oh my gosh this scene where she like ejects the bullet in slow motion and like hits it with her god bracelet. Damn. yeah oh. that was so good oh my gosh that was great that oh was and so she's great. using some of the moves she used before like that sliding across the floor thing where mm-hmm. she like does the slide thing and kicks up afterwards yeah apparently wonder woman um <laughs> She kind of missed her calling as a great baseball player. Oh, God, yes. Brett Butler would have had nothing on her. <laughs> it's the original Sultan of Swing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I feel like you don't know that reference. <laughs> Played for the Royals, and that fucker could slide. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know, maybe I... your parents were watching sports and you were just forced to be in the room. Because it would have I... been around that time. It was like 1990. I know the Sultan of Swing, man. Is that the Sultan of Swing, Brett Butler? No, no, right. absolutely not. I was about to say, I think my, I think my histories, I was about to get an MRI. That's what I was <laughs> <laughs> Babe Ruth was a salt of swing. That's what I thought. But yeah. you said it the second time and I was like, maybe I, do I, am I dying? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about Wonder Woman being the salt of swing, not other person. No, that dude was just really good at sliding. He had a special, him and Ricky Henderson had a gift for like the moment they hit the mm. base. Mm. They would they would go from completely horizontal to completely vertical. It was it was insane. Yeah, uh, yeah. The 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 sliding capability was amazing. Yeah, you know this conversation has become like when I'm at work and people are like joking around, making like kind of inappropriate jokes, and yeah. like you make a crack along with them, and then all of a sudden they're talking about like their deep rooted fetishes, and you're just like, holy shit! I need to get the hell out of this conversation right now. <laughs> Just some sliding technique. You're okay. You're <laughs> safe. That's what they said. <laughs> it's like you're safe. And then I love that apparently in that context, you pulled out like the one baseball reference, you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to move on. But it was still funny for me. <laughs> yeah, it was funny for me too, to an extent. And also we'll, hurtful to another extent. We'll let you get back to a place where we're both more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, Patty Jenkins has confirmed that WB is developing a movie focused on the Amazons. Good. She's not going to direct, but she will be an executive producer. That also is good. In, that is in development. I mean, I, I really like her as a director, but um, yeah, fuck. Like, let somebody play in your camp. Build yeah. that world. Let's do this. Let's do, Let's like, you know, $50 million. Don't consider it a, a superhero movie. Just kind of throw it out. It can come out the same year as that, you know... Aquaman spinoff, whatever the hell that was. The Reach? Is that what that was called? <laughs> yeah, The Reach, I think, is what they're reaching for right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I would also happily watch, like, a Hippolyta or an uh, uh, Auntie, what's her name? Um, oh, I'm just blanking yeah, out right Yeah, now. me too. I oh, thought it's going to hurt me. I thought Shandor, and then I went, nope, that's the there Ghostbusters. There are people yelling at us. There are people literally. <laughs> Antiope? Antiope? <laughs> no, uh, Antiope. Antiope? Yes. I got all the letters right, but not the pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally watch her movie. It took us a minute to get there, but Yeah. But I I'm think, in. I think an Antiope was uh was something I saw mating on the Discovery Channel once. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's an antelope without the back legs. <laughs> yeah, it's an anti op. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, they have to hop. Um anyway. That's <laughs> An anti-op would just be a, a, a creature who refuses to be photographed. <laughs> it's just anti-op. <laughs> anti, anti-photo-op? Yes. Okay. That's stupid. <laughs> it, it, yeah. But it, it amused really me. <laughs> because I want to relate to it. Uh-huh. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins are teasing plans for Wonder Woman 3. Um, Gadot said, watching the movie now, I'm just so happy and so grateful that it was all worth it and that we use this amazing opportunity that we got to tell the Wonder Woman story once again. And we've done it in a whole new way of its own. It's a different chapter. And then Jenkins says, we actually already know the story to Wonder Woman 3. It's just a matter of will we change our minds and when to make it. I think what we don't want to do is do it back to back. It's been great doing these two movies back to back, but I think it's important to give a little rest in between. And I like doing other things in between. And Gal has other things to do. I never want to make decisions too far in advance. We have to see if we both feel like making the movie we think we want to make when the moment comes. Uh, that sounds like they don't know if this is going to be a hit quite yet. And they haven't had those conversations with Warner Brothers quite yet. Honestly, it sounded like, to me, it sounded like they thought it was probably going to play out for them on this movie, and they just oh, weren't yeah. sure where the universe was landing yet. Yeah, I think uh, I think that too, yeah. Either way, I like the idea of just taking a breather as creators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm all right with that. All right, you want to talk about Birds of Prey? Hit it. Why? Well, originally, I didn't have a lot of Birds of Prey, but then stuff happened. Um, They had the, the CCXP in Brazil. A lot of news came out of that. Uh, apparently there was a trailer and some footage for Birds of Prey that got shown. And Umberto Gonzalez was there and he says, they just showed Black Mask's actual mask in Hell the yeah. special CCXP 19 Birds of Prey trailer. It is comic accurate. Nice. So everybody calm your shit. Take a I would have been happy fan. with either a mask or kind of semi-traditionally an actual mask that's part of his face now. Mm-hmm. Everyone just take a big old fan, direct it solely at your titties. Cool them off. <laughs> you can buy those for about $3 a pop mm-hmm. with the missed function mm-hmm. on Amazon. Because they've, they've been releasing all these new posters for Birds of Prey, and they're very heavily, like, they're, like, parodying uh, Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Harley standing in, a, in a, like, a clamshell, and then you've got, like, you've got uh, Bernie the Beaver over here, and, you you know, you've got everybody... And then they have like individual uh, posters of everyone and Black Mask still doesn't have his black mask on. And people are just like, why is he wearing pajamas instead of a... Shut up. Shut up. Gosh. Calm down. Whiners. Whiners. Calm down. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sorry if you're a whiner. Just just let it breathe. I'm not sorry. It is 2019. Damn near 2020. (laughs) We have been watching these movies. I mean, what, since 1979? Since before most of us were born. Yeah, and also our our mantra as DC on screen has become, uh, our title must might as well be DC on screen, uh, colon, give it a fucking minute. Mm, something like that, yes. Uh, I understand you want comic book accuracy, but at the same time, comic books don't have comic book accuracy. At some point, you just have to like take a breath and... Move the hell on. No. Either like it, was, it or don't. Quit, like, attacking the people involved in it. No. The and, idea of accuracy is uh, a little bit absurd in a way, it, just given the premise of what we're all dealing with. For God's sake, stop attacking people who enjoy what they're seeing. Yeah, that's... It, it, there's a, an instinct we've been dealing with for years. Like, even if you didn't enjoy it, just fucking let everyone else who did just have that moment. Yeah. You're not you're not going to, like, correct their behavior or something. Best case scenario, you bring them down, too. Yeah. Just, it's just a just, bummer to see. Just let it be. If you didn't enjoy it, I'm sorry. And, and feel free to discuss your opinions as far as they are, you know, something you can express and we can talk about. But mm-hmm. <laughs> at the same end, like, we almost always premise our opinions, like, look, if you, it, it's, especially if we didn't enjoy something. We normally say, like, look, if you enjoyed it, I you know good for you and yeah tell me why but we didn't enjoy it for these reasons yeah exactly all right so uh they did show the opening scene of birds of prey at the ccxp um yes. we got the rap uh shared this little description uh in the ccxp exclusive footage harley quinn explains her current relationship status she recently kicked the joker to the curb while she goes on to burn a lot of bridges in service of reinventing herself in gotham city we broke mm-hmm. up she narrates just uh sorry mr j was super broke up about it but Harley continues, uh, she's got an amazing new place that was all mine, where she has, quote, the space to reflect on the mistakes of my past. But this freed her up to become, quote, a new me, she says, and soon enough she was back, uh, soon enough I was back on my feet, ready to make new friends. Um, and while Harley talks up her fresh start, we see her trademark pet hyenas. 
and we see a scene with her on roller skates and she knocks some people down. She says, this is the time for Gotham to meet the new Harley Quinn. She, uh, can, <laughs> she steals an 18 wheeler and crashes it into Ace Chemicals. The, uh, the plant that gave her and the Joker their, their, uh, skin issues and hair. Yeah. And the plant blows up. She says, it was the closure I needed. <laughs> and we see a massive Joker green explosion while she walks toward the frame. And, uh, and that was it. I'm down for all of that. I like the direction that, uh, and it, the subtitle involves her emancipation. I like the idea that she's not just going to be an agent of chaos like Joker. She's mm-hmm. going to find a direction, which would be different from him in a very specific way. Yeah. I, I like would never finding want... a thing to do for the Joker would be antithetical to the Joker. Uh, I mean, he has short-term plans. Yeah, short-term plans, I think. But, like, finding a life purpose. Yeah. Finding a, maybe. other than to be chaos is kind of antithetical to me. His whole thing is just, I'm going to unravel what you think is a plan. Mm-hmm. With my and own intricate plan. For her to actually have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... For her to actually have one, like she's the dog chasing cars, and she knows what to do when she fights the uh, when mm. she gets the car. Yeah, I like it. I, I like that as a possibility for her, and it makes sense comic wise. It 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 is. God forbid I use the phrase after what we just said. It is. It, it just. Uh, it is comic accurate. Yeah. Except Harley doesn't come from the comic. She comes from Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> I know. I was waiting for you to do that. Is it Dini accurate? It doesn't matter, man. It's kind of both accurate, for being <laughs> honest. All right, Margot Robbie's been doing a ton of uh, a ton of press. Uh, she was talking a little bit about how uh, Birds of Prey connects to Harley Quinn and Suicide Squad. She says, "I think something I explored a lot in Suicide Squad, the first film, was Harley's codependence with the Joker, and obviously he has a huge influence on her. But obviously, mm-hmm. she was very much in a relationship with him when we first saw, saw Harley on screen in Suicide Squad. And I did want to explore." What is the version of Harley out of a relationship and whether she's out of a relationship on her own accord or he's kind of kicked her to the curb and it's still, but it still affects her, but in a very different way. And I thought we'd see a very different facet of her personalities, personalities, I would say, because I think she has multiple. And, uh, oh, yeah, no, and, I mean, even in this yeah. continuity, she still starts as a legitimate professor of her, uh, therapeutic clinician of some kind. Mm-hmm. She's, she's a PhD. And, or MD. Uh, I'm not actually sure. I don't know if she can prescribe <laughs> or if she's. I don't know what if she's a psychiatrist yeah, or a psychologist. But um, and I, you know, for this next bit, I can actually try to do my uh, my best Rush Limbaugh impersonation. Uh, oh, this will be fun. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna settle back for it. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm ready. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, uh, as, uh, as you'll recall, uh, listeners of this program, uh, in a past episode, uh, the birds of unreliable narration, I stated that, uh, Marley Quinn, uh, was going to be an unreliable, uh, narrator in the, uh, birds of prey, uh, movie. And uh, now we have Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie, uh, pinko liberal commie, uh, <laughs> herself explaining that <laughs> Margot Robbie is pretty spot on. I'm yeah, just I know, I know. You. Uh, now, Harley Quinn is going to be an unreliable narrator. Mar- Margot Robbie is saying, <laughs> she says a very unre- unreliable. I like the papers ruffling. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, having grown up in an environment where I watched the Rush Limbaugh show, where he had like a crackling fire in the background, uh-huh. I, I kind of wanted those sounds. Mm. Uh, yeah. And I, I also couldn't hear you tipping uh, hydrocodone into your mouth while you were doing that prescription. <laughs> or, while you were doing that Invitation. Right. Anyway, she says uh, Harley is the narrator of the story, a very unreliable, erratic narrator, which is fun, but it is uh, it also gives, I think, the audience an opportunity to kind of be inside her brain sometimes and see the world through her eyes at times. But really, it's about, I guess you'll wait and see how well she does or does not get along with the Birds of Prey in the end. But mm-hmm. ultimately, I think she is not a traditional member of the Birds of Prey, and yet it's so hard to talk about this. Uh, so yeah, she, uh, we, we were talking about it a few weeks ago she is an unreliable narrator so everyone yeah. should just calm down about the tonality of the movie good gosh and i don't care yeah, if it wasn't the, unreliable let this one sit <laughs> let it ferment drink uh, it later now <laughs> they, they add some hops if it's if it's not quite there for you mm-hmm. comicbook.com got to go to the uh the set and talk to a uh-huh. few people and check out what was going on and brandon davis reported that uh 
<laughs> he says, this movie is going to be rated R. Sure, there's a chance that the scene filmed on this particular day would be edited down to have less language that goes beyond the PG-13 barrier, but the use of 16 F-words in one three-minute sequence suggests it would be quite difficult to make the moment <laughs> friendly for the entire family. <laughs> <laughs> and you know she just talks about how it was nice to have the freedom I'm... to 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 go there and she had to censor herself a lot for the pg rating on suicide squad and, i get yeah. it i get it i i like the idea that there's an editor who knows he was going to be he or she was going to be in charge of this property trying to mm-hmm. pin it down to a pg-13 versus r and and went into what i can only describe pre-therapy Mm-hmm. Being like, mm-mm, mm-mm, yeah, no, I've just seen the cuts for a couple days, and I'm just going to go ahead and sign up uh, to to talk to somebody because uh, this is going to be uh, fucking awful, mm-hmm. stressful Ooh. AF. Yeah, and Kathy Yan talked a little bit about uh, casting the characters. She says we saw everyone, we had them do chemistry reads, and both Journey and Mary talking about uh, Black Canary and Huntress. Sure. Uh, just gave such depth to their characters. I think that's what was really compelling about them immediately from the get-go. There's such personality to them. When I cast, I'm always looking uh, to find a similar soul in the actors as well as the characters that they play. So I think with Journey, I mean, she's just so intelligent and deep and grounded, and she manages to be both very soft but also really street street smart and tough, which was very much Canary. And then I think with Huntress, Huntress has such an amazing backstory in the psychology of someone who, frankly, is a little bit, you know, has potentially PTSD and, you know, reeling from all that. And Mary was able to really understand that and bring the depth to it uh, so that she became a real character and not just like a badass. Love it. She also says, I've been a big fan of Rosie Perez for many years. And I think for me, when I first read the script, I always sort of imagined a bit of a more mature Renee as like a nice balance with the other women. Uh, I've always described this group. It's a motley crew. They don't look like the typical girl gang. And I like that. I like that they come together kind of unconventionally and randomly. And so, you know, uh, with Rosie, I mean, she just brings such strength to the role and such personality as well. And she's awesome. Uh, I kind of, I want her role to some extent to be like, oh, you think you think you've seen some shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me describe. <laughs> let me describe a rel- uh, like a day on the beat <laughs> in my life. Mm-hmm. And and Margot Robbie says everyone's got their own rule of ethics that they abide by, and they kind of conflict with each other, which is always interesting in an ensemble. I'm I'm just getting more excited about this this movie. Honestly, oh, it's good. It it has a lot of the promise that Suicide Squad, that the original Suicide Squad did, um, and hopefully with more commitment to the director just doing their thing. Mm-hmm. And like Margot Robbie read a bunch of comics, and she really loved the Huntress and loved all of like the gangster stuff, and she really wanted to do a movie that was not like world ending, but was more like a you know grounded gangster movie in a lot of ways and yeah. then found Huntress and of course all of that backstory with uh Helena yeah. and then I think with, she would have loved the uh Jeff Lobron like Dark mm-hmm. Victory and all that and then with uh Cassandra Christina Hodson said that one of her favorite films uh her and Robbie's one of their favorite films was uh Leon the Professional uh with Natalie Portman as a Luke Besson movie uh yeah, and it was um it, it, it's a good movie but um, I'll trust you. It's like a it's like little ten year old, twelve year old uh, Natalie Portman, and she's kind of taken in by this like assassin. <laughs> uh, nice. It's a good movie, and uh, they love that relationship, the mentor and mentee, a very unexpected friendship. There, we kind of found ourselves gravitating towards as well. Uh, producer Sue Kroll told Comicbook dot com that Batgirl is not going to be in Birds of Prey. Uh, she says, you'll not see Batgirl. I'm just going to say no. This is a studio thing. Batgirl is in in development for her own film. Now, I know we were talking about uh, a few weeks ago, So there there was an African-American actress who was uh, cast in a mystery role for Matt Reeves, Batman movie. And there has been speculation that she's going to be Batgirl. And a lot of people were saying, you know, obviously if Jeffrey Wright is going to be Gordon, then Batgirl's going to be black. Uh, I was kind of joking about how that's just way too familiar in a way. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing, though, is we don't know where this is going to go, but if Christina Hodson, the same person who's writing Birds of Prey, that's in the DCEU, 
that's in the same universe with J.K. Simmons, Gordon. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But now our website, we got this covered. We don't take them seriously. Anything that they say, we take with a giant grain of salt. No, they do not have this covered. They do not have that covered. <laughs> exactly. They've got it covered with bullshit and lies. <laughs> but one of their sources said that WB has a wish list for who they who should play Barbara Gordon in uh-huh. this in this movie. Apparently, Catherine Langford is on the top of that list. She's in that Netflix show, 13 Reasons Why. She also played um, Tony Stark's daughter in Endgame, but a teenage version that we never actually saw. She didn't make the cut. Her scene no, but I remember the, the face from the 13 Reasons Why posters. Mm-hmm. Is that her? Yeah, should yeah. be. Um, so if if it's that girl, I, I, I don't think that they're doing Batgirl in the Matt Reeves universe. And it wouldn't make sense to me if they did Bat, the Matt Reeves Batgirl, because I feel like they're not going to do a solo movie branching off from Matt Reeves shit. Like Matt Reeves is going to be in charge of whatever he's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it'd be a bit of a coin toss if they tried to, if they tried to do one version versus the other. I mean, I don't know, but I feel like Matt Reeves is like a Nolan situation. Like he's going to get, you I know, think they're going to let him do his own thing. Yeah. He or, gets in this case, total it's say a over Todd his Phillips shit. situation. Yeah. Well, now. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to let him play with his own universe. Well, Matt Reeves was in there before something. Todd Phillips though. I know, but his film came to fruition before, so it did. But his, Here we but, are now. but Matt Reeves' deal was there before. Like Matt Reeves, just like so much. Yeah, so it's been so many years, and they're just like, well, "What do you think, Matt?" And he's like, "Um, I got shit to do. I'll get to it." <laughs> I know, I know, but one came out first, so. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 now that, that they've seen some evidence that something could or could not work. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I I think they're gonna maybe let him play in his own sandbox. It's that Nolan deal for real, though. Yeah, we know yeah, what it, it is. is in a way. It's that Nolan deal. Um, so yeah, that that if that's a possibility, then uh, or if that's really what they are looking at, I I, I don't think they'll be going Matt Reeves' way. Um, which you know it's fine, especially if Gail Simone's involved, which I'm hearing she yeah. is. I'm hearing she is in in various uh, capacities. But though though she has said she's not even directly she's not directly involved in the Birds of Prey stuff, but she has been tangentially involved. So, right. But she knows stuff about Batgirl. She said she knows stuff about Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> um, over to the Suicide Squad. James Gunn has said that he is going to be showing footage at the CCXP in 2020, and uh, Matt Reeves says he's going to be showing Batman stuff at the CCXP in Brazil in 2020. Mm-hmm. And by the way, he's also uh, announced that Peter Sarsgaard is going to be in the Batman in a mystery role. We don't know who, who he's playing yet. A lot of nice. people are saying Harvey Dent, but uh, you'll recall he was um, he was the bad guy in Green Lantern. Sinestro? No. Nope. Wait, he, on, let me look it up. That guy's already found... Uh, Sinestro, or Sinestro has already found... Uh, a home in the DCEU as uh, Savannah. Oh, you're right. All right, sorry. Uh, Peter Skarsgård. I can just tell you. Oh, that guy. Yeah, Hector Hammond. Yeah, old forgotten Hector. Mm-hmm. <laughs> old <Yeah>. loose end Hector. <laughs> yeah, and pretty uh, good. Yeah, I've, I've liked him when I've seen him. Yeah, and Production Weekly says that the Batman's uh, working title is Vengeance. Which I've always thought it was silly to to actually announce what your working title is. Like I thought the point of the working title is so people didn't like barrage you with bullshit while you were trying to film. Oh yeah, no my my favorite uh, film group is Working Title Productions. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. just uh, go fuck yourself, Productions. Essentially, yeah. All right, so someone asked Ava DuVernay for an update on New Gods. She says writing with Tom King is like Barda in a battle, strong and fearing no man. Nice. I'm excited about that. Also, knowing his writing on these things, like, that's not... That doesn't mean anything as far as who's going to come out on top. Mm-mm. I don't, I don't know who the leading character of New Gods could be. I don't know. I'm assuming Bla- uh, I'm assuming uh, Big Barter. There's a lot of name-checking, and we know he came from Mr. Miracle cloth, so... Shit, man. I mean... I, I could genuinely do with a lot of his uh, Mr. Miracle run on mm-hmm. screen. And be very happy. I don't want that. I don't. I want a new Dale. I want a new Tom King, Ava DuVernay, like proper New God's Tale. Not like not necessarily a, a character study in a no, pod, I mean, you know 
I don't necessarily mean tell the same story. I you just, just want the I war. Want, I just want the beats. Okay. Because <laughs> there were so many. It, it's really it's the humanity he brought to those characters. That's fair. It's the the in between spaces that mm-hmm. uh, like there was a war in the background and they're just like discussing like well I mean maybe we should make a room for another child I don't know and in the in between beats of them discussing like well maybe we make a nursery maybe we just move this wall and the condo and blah 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 and they're like it, in a new god war where every day they might just die but that's irrelevant they're just talking about their possible children and, and like mm-hmm. that flippancy the uh the aloof nature of it it was so compelling yeah because it made sense it made sense for the new gods or, or especially the the minor new gods you know yeah we're not talking about zeus or dark side if you want to or harry or aries or whatever uh they're talking about like mercury and, and like those fuckers that are just sitting there on the periphery being like ah no, this shit's weird <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna roll with it. Did he just? Did he just swan fuck some? Okay, he just did. He just did that. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> oh, she's a cow now. Oh, Hera's mad. Hera's Hera's really mad. Hera's really mad about this. Is that a gadfly? Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Oh, look, Prometheus. All right, so Aquaman two. <laughs> Soul <a little> adventure. <laughs> Aquaman two. <laughs> oh, we have uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen say. <laughs> He says, we have a date of December 2022. Hopefully that will hold. Black Mana will be back. I feel confident in saying that. I'm excited to step into that world again and cause some more trouble. Sweet. Yep. Looking forward to it. Uh, great Shazam. job before. God damn, he's doing great in Watchmen. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I've heard. <sighs> I've heard. Mm-hmm. Shazam is... I'm sorry uh, you were spoiled on that. I, really I, I know. Shazam is now on HBO. David Sandberg uh, says, pleasantly surprised to see that Shazam is in its original aspect ratio on HBO. They're not always great with that. So go go Shazam <laughs> on HBO. It's Pony Smasher approved. Hashtag black bars actually means more picture. Nice. Now, this is a Truth. bit of fun. This is, uh, I don't know how serious this is actually, but a fan suggested that Bruce Campbell has enough of a physical resemblance to the Superman from Kingdom Come that he, it would be fun to see him take on that role. And Campbell responded. I don't think I've ever thought this before. Too much gin. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I was I was looking at the comparisons and I don't I don't agree. I think he's perfect. But uh he responded with a picture of how he currently looks, which is a gray big a big gray beard alongside the original, you know, tweet of like aging bearded Superman, you know, from Kingdom Come. Yeah. And uh and Bruce Campbell says that he's ready for geezer Superman. <laughs> I mean, I'm into it. I I'm into it. I just I love he's that Bruce. A lot of he's called the chin in certain yeah. circles. I, I hey, he has a glorious chin. He does, but so does Superman. Not trying to take away from that. It is glorious, but I'm not sure that that's exactly the person I'm thinking of. There's, there's. It seems like there's more moderation in the <laughs> Superman facial features. I don't know, man. But doesn't he have that? Am I remembering wrong? Does he have? He does have the dimple on the chin. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking. I'm looking at a a Bruce Tim. Superman up here. I'm looking giant chin. Alex Ross. Eh, he looks like Bruce Campbell to me. Uh, <laughs> does he have the dimple though? That's the, does Bruce Campbell have the dimple? That's. I mean, he's got dimples. No, oh, we gotta have the chin dimple. Campbell doesn't have that, does he? No. See, Campbell has like a flat chin. Uh, let me say, hold on. I'm gonna look at Henry Campbell. Just bear with me for I don't know. How many? How many two seconds? How many supermen uh, in that's going to be on Crisis have the dimple? You are gatekeeping, yeah, you're right. sir. You're right. Henry Cavill does not have the dimple either, you but are, he does have a mortifying chin in a way. You are gatekeeping, sir. <laughs> yes, I am hypothetically gatekeeping <laughs> with with my like hand on the key and happily and ready to give it over with a moment's notice. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm okay, the gatekeeper. Are you the key master? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just had this good idea. Here you go. Let me know how it works out. <laughs> Please make sure it's part of a streaming service that I already pay for. Plus, one time yeah. I turned into a dog and they helped me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hashtag fuck dimples. <laughs> Alrighty. 
So here was a bit of controversy. Uh huh. Um, so some cat named Danny D. Placido, who is a, apparently a senior contributor over on Forbes, uh, wrote this just trash take on Superman that claims there's no way to really make him cool or relevant in today's superhero saturation. And, nope. uh, is, uh, he's got arguments about how you can't change too much of the costume because then it isn't his costume. You can't take, make him too funny because he's not, he's not funny. He's, he needs to be bright and colorful, but he's got to be deadly serious. Oh my gosh. I haven't read it, but if you're representing this accurately, I agree that it's a trash shake. That's, that's some bullshit. And, uh, the, the tweet that he posts this article on says that, uh, DC films doesn't know what to do with Superman. The studio reportedly is unsure how to make the character quote relevant to modern audiences. Now, a lot of people got upset about that, obviously bringing up, uh, Cavill and Snyder and, and then this upset people, even though I agree with it. And I don't think he was being, I don't think this guy, Neil Gaiman, the wonderful, <laughs> the beautiful Neil Gaiman was, uh, throwing shade. Is that still a saying? I don't think he was throwing shade at Snyder or Cavill. Uh, mm. but Neil Gaiman, even if he was throwing shade, you still got to respect this Neil Gaiman. It's still Neil Gaiman. You, yeah. You still need to, you know, stop and go, well, shit, Neil Gaiman could outright David Goyer any day. Yeah. I think David Goyer would probably like to put down his pen and bend his bow to Neil Gaiman's will. So I, I would think so. Neil Gaiman points out, he says, uh, he says, <laughs> you don't make it relevant. You make it inspiring. That's a, that's a fine point. And, you know, I've seen some people, you know, get mad because of the brevity of it. You know, the, you know, like, oh, well, that's easy for you to say. No, it is easy for him to say. He's Neil friggin' Gaiman. <laughs> <laughs> He's been relevant several times. That just that, just that statement alone is enough to, make you stop and really think it just think about it think about it what it means now plenty of you myself included can say that Zack snyder did uh succeed in making uh henry cavill and his superman relevant and that's fine that's why there's so many people out there screaming about the snyder's cut and all that but uh you know uh i i think it's is whether you agree with what snyder did or not neil's correct you don't try to make him relevant you don't want him walking around trying to listen to spotify or some shit you don't you're not trying to hit that base you want to make him an inspiration to people he's yeah um, it's um don't chase fads chase the character it was a whedon quote no don't give the audience (laughs) what they want give them what they need Uh uh-huh and i know he was paraphrasing but still um it's relevant Mm -hmm. and yeah gaiman's a good example of just he it his process as far as i've ever seen is just go into your own little corner write the thing you want to do mm-hmm. talk about the people that you would want to uh relate to and then if it relates to people it relates to people mm-hmm. if it doesn't it's trash we just but you throw something out there you don't you're not reactionary you're right. not trying to write something in spite of something or or uh, react to it you're you're just writing it's like the be the change you want to see in the world kind of thing mhm yeah i get it I get it, and it's kind of profound in a way. It's a really good quote. Yep. Um, Henry Cavill was doing, he's been doing press for The Witcher, and he was asked mm-hmm. uh, what he would like to explore with Superman if the chance comes along, and he says, where we left off with Man of Steel in particular was the guy who had found his place, or was trying to find his place, but had sort of found it by the end, and that had committed something which he would consider a most horrific sin by killing the last member of his species. That is a place sure. where I would like to travel from with the character, him exploring the positivity of who he is, not necessarily the chocolate box version, but the leaning into that, the character, that character who becomes an icon of hope and enjoying that experience rather than necessarily being made uncomfortable by it. Perfect. Please. Yes. And let's. Yep. J.J. Uh, Abrams was asked, and he was, he's been promoting Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, but he was asked oh, about Superman. He's busy. Yeah. He's busy right now. Abram says, and this is important. Abram says, I have not had one official, official conversation <laughs> with Warner Brothers <laughs> at all about this. But people have mm-hmm. asked me this question, and I know that we, Bad Robot, we recently signed a deal with Warner Media. We will begin in earnest all discussions about what's coming next. But I know no more than you do about what's next, certainly in terms of DC. Nice. Uh, Henry Cavill's getting a lot of crap, though. Uh, because <laughs> Fox Five's Kevin McCarthy asked him about the Snyder Cut movement, and um, Cavill says, "I have not seen any Snyder Cut. 
I don't know if there's anything that exists that is a Snyder Cut. I'm sure there's footage out there which has probably been pieced together over the years. (laughs) I'm always interested to see how that stuff turns out. But that is very much a chapter of my past. I would rather talk about what is going to happen in the future. The future of Superman. How I can express that character from the comic books, which ties in nicely to Man of Steel. Man of Steel. I really like that movie. And I'd like to be able to tell the story where it was left at that point. When uh, And then he was asked if... Uh, apparently he's my spirit animal. When asked if that could uh, happen, he apparently seemed cagey and said, I can tell you nothing, unfortunately. It would indeed be awesome. So a lot of people have given him crap about that. And... Uh, Snyder, though, has come out and said, you know, he's put out pictures of Henry Cavill, said to love Henry. Like, Cavill is not speaking because he is not in a position to. And I have no doubt that Snyder and Cavill's relationship is good. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's none of that. I just also feel like he talks about it in a certain way where I'm like, mm, yeah, no, that seems more realistic to me. Mm. Now, um, we have Terrio in an interview with Up Rocks, uh, Chris Terrio, mm-hmm. writer of Justice League. Mm-hmm. was asked if the Snyder Cut truly exists. Of course, he's doing promotion for Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. Sure. So he says, the thing is, I can't really speak to that at this moment, but I promise that I will talk to you about that very thing at some point after, after <laughs> Star Wars, <laughs> after Star Wars. And the interviewer mentioned that they have a lot to talk about in the future. Terrio says, yes, we do. We seriously do. Then in nice. an interview with Polygon, <laughs> he was, you know, promoting Skywalker. Skywalker. <laughs> Terrio was asked the status of Zack Snyder's director's cut, and Terrio responded as follows. And this can be taken in a couple of different ways. Mm-hmm. He says, I have thoughts about the Snyder cut. I do have them, but I won't talk about it right now. We'll have a date in a couple of months, and we'll talk about it then. Because you know that is a really interesting topic that I have not spoken about yet. Now you can you can misconstrue that in uh, several different ways or you can i mean there's no telling how you can really take that legitimately maybe we the date in a couple of months is when he can talk about other projects that are are not star wars maybe that date is a thing that he knows about that is an announcement forthcoming about the snyder cut all of those are possible yep um we have Zack snyder who has because of you know cavill's statements and you know, a lot of people saying like, aha, we knew it. It doesn't exist. Zack Snyder put out a freaking photo of the, they are the containers, the film containers that are marked with the labels ZS and JL followed by director's cut with the runtime on it two fourteen, the time that we've been told over and over again. The caption says, is it real? Does it exist? Of course it does. Right. Um, we saw that. And someone asked about, you know, why, why he posted it. He says, cause I'm, t- I'm tired of people saying it's not real. <laughs> um, we had scott mendelson professional troll scott mendelson who uh <laughs> said that on twitter that this is most certainly an assembly an assembly cut which is always excessively long because that's what an assembly cut is and uh, no no don't stupid voice that that's real except when you're talking about a snyder movie which is usually no, over three it- hours long yeah, but an assembly cut is still longer than the actual cut. Yeah, but when you're looking at pictures of the cut, and yeah. it says 214. And I know, I'm just saying that the idea that the assembly cut is longer than the actual cut. Yeah. That's not an exaggeration. It's it's not, except he's actively trolling here. He is <laughs> Scott Mendelson has always been the the anti DC guy. He's always been the guy who's you know taken a shit on DC. Every and Zack Snyder specifically. Um, and then Zack Snyder actually responded because Zack Snyder ain't playing no more. Actually responded on Twitter and said the assembly cut was nearly five hours long. <laughs> like nope. Uh, and this is where it gets weird, like super weird. Subway, the sandwich company. <laughs> yeah responds we want all of it too hashtag release the snyder cut schlotsky's says i'm with subway on this one hashtag release the snyder cut moe's southwest grill responds we stand in solidarity with subway hashtag release the snyder cut (laughs) then we have ben affleck Uh, no no before that before you get to ben affleck uh because i i i can totally explain a couple of uh stars of the people that were in that movie tweeting yeah hashtag releases not good mm-hmm. honestly subway 
and a couple of other people is the closest I've ever thought to being like, okay, no, this might be real. Mm-hmm. That's the, that is the closest I've ever thought oh. to like, nope, critical mass. I might be right. Ra- and, and oh my God, I can't believe I'm, about, I'm about, about to say this, but that's the closest I've ever been to critical mass. Mm-hmm. Several companies getting on board. That's different from a couple of celebrities getting on board. It really, I don't care if it's Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck. Yeah. It, that's it weird, is different. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think this is this is all very very uh planned. This is this is to put pressure on on Warner Brothers and at the negotiation table. I will bet you anything. Um yeah, it could be. Now, uh but that's see. I mean as much as I've <sighs> I haven't fought the idea. I've just not been able to buy into it. But um yeah, as much as I have, this is the closest I've ever been like, no. If companies are willing to literally pitch in, that may be their that that may be meaning that they're willing to pitch in sponsorship wise, which means actual money. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, we we had Ben Affleck. He's he says today is Giving Tuesday, and I'm proud to support Feeding America, an organization helping hungry families across the country. Someone tweeted that at Subway. Hey, how many retweets for ten thousand sandwiches for hungry families during the holiday period? And one tweet with really a Snyder cut. Subway says, uh, you know, 5,000. Then goes crazy. Subway says, so you're fast, reference to Justice League. (laughs) And since you did it under 214 minutes, we're going to up the donation to 15,000 subs. And oh yeah, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Um, Of course, Zack Snyder thanked them for their support. I mean, this company's revived Chuck Uh on NBC, Mm -hmm. which required about three and a half million viewers at the time. And because of this, though, I expect that shirt to be licensed, you know, because, you know, Zack Snyder's doing Army of the Dead over on yeah. Netflix. I expect a, a Subway Eat Flesh shirt <laughs> legitimized <laughs> in conjunction with this release. Oh, uh, that's good. Or sorry, Zombies Eat Flesh, but in the Subway font. <laughs> Whatever it was. That's, that's, that's good. Uh, yeah, the the branding yeah. can flesh this out for you. Mm. <laughs> All right. So we've also got Clay Staub, who is a regular Zack Snyder collaborator. He was the uh, aerial second assistant director on the Justice League shoot. Uh, mm-hmm. Posted a picture of Bruce on the, uh, on, on the mighty steed looking for Aquaman said, release the Snyder cut. You know, we've, we've just got a lot of people who are just really invested in this. And, uh, and I'm apparently one of them. I, some months back I wasn't. And, the closer it seemed to actually happening, the the more I think I'm I'm just yeah dyed in the wool. Oh, I would I would genuinely love to see it. I just uh, honestly until there were companies just pitching in, yeah, and they still could just be honestly those could just be ploys, yeah, um, just cashing in on the hashtag, and it it would cost them nothing. It it the same yeah. way I was saying that like. When Ben and and Gal were doing it before, it it, it cost them nothing, and it's goodwill, and and that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason I'm at, at all faulting on my uh, uh, <laughs> prediction might be that, like, yeah, if they have the if they have the backing of enough businesses, mm-hmm. and now that they have HBO Max as a possible forum, yeah, maybe, mm-hmm. and enough people saying. You know, it, it, it's only a couple months that that could still just be people talking out of turn for a subject that's worth way too many clicks. If you just say something in its favor, I mean, it, it could still just be uh, it, it fault or all. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, a couple of companies getting involved is the closest I've gotten to, to really feeling like it might be a thing. Yeah. Well, look, you know, you got the Google Analytics for this thing are crazy. And uh, Stephen Colbert recently talked about that on on a podcast. I think it was the Dave the Film Junkies podcast on his uh, vodka stream. And nice. uh, Warner Brothers knows, man. They know that the the analytics for this thing are out, off the charts. And if everything we've heard about the Snyder Cut is true, they've pretty much got uh, they've got a whole separate blockbuster just sitting on a shelf somewhere. It's just oh, I don't think we're talking about a blockbuster here. Finish that. Sh- I mean it. It was made to be. It, we are not talking about a blockbuster here. Mm. That's it I would think be that's it the would limiting be, factor that would, a lot of people are are be misrepresenting. For, it would be like, for I think a lot service. of people that are it would hashtag be for, release the Snyder Cut are thinking like you're just gonna 
release this thing and it's going to blow the no. whole thing open. No. no. It's a niche movie. It is a niche movie, but also is it would be a huge, it would be a blockbuster in terms of launching a streaming service for sure. Yeah. I mean, it would be a huge boon for that. Like since the, uh, since HBO Max released that trailer where they released the Justice League in general, I was like, well, no, that's it's actually a good platform for them to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it, like that makes the most sense of anything. Yeah. And it makes sense that maybe they're trying to hype up to that. Mm-hmm. But it's not getting beyond that. Like your best case scenario, you're not getting this in theaters. Limited availability at best. And that's a pipe dream. I mean, I don't think it'll get like wide release, but uh No. It might we're not get getting this in Birmingham. It, I mean what do we get in Birmingham? No, nothing. Fucking actually nothing. we actually do better than Montgomery. I'm from Montgomery, and Montgomery gets exactly jack true, shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have the biggest population in Alabama. So, yeah, if you're going to come to Alabama, you might as well go to Birmingham. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's all I got on Snyder Cut for now. All right. There's some hope there, but I'm still super dubious. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I know. <laughs> it's going to happen, man. <laughs> you got to send the good vibes out, man. It's like Ghostbusters 2. I'm going to be on this no, Ghostbusters shit all night. Vibes don't mean goddamn shit. <laughs> Nah, man. You gotta high and high and There's He's thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Tell that to Bill Murray. <laughs> that man wrote the Statue of Liberty on hopes and prayers. Yeah. And goodwill. All right. We're going to go to break. And when we come back, we're talking about uh, Stargirl and a bunch of other DC TV related stuff, but not crisis spoilers from the episodes that have aired. Not those. The, the one that aired last night and the one that just aired that we haven't gotten to see? Or that I haven't gotten to see. You've gotten to see. I got to see the the, the first part. Ah, fuck you. God, I'm, I'm, I'm legit mad. Um, a quick side story uh-huh. uh, before before we take the break, I guess. Um, <laughs> All right. I went to like a, uh, <laughs> I went to a, like this uh, classy function last night at a museum of art. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, I... Tim, I'm I'm a little bit out of my out of my element. It's uh, it's uh, the, the wife's work function on this, mm-hmm. and uh, and sure enough, I found two different people. Where I was like, "Hey, are you kind of sad? You're not." And <laughs> and people finished the sentence so like, "No, it's I'm recording it right now." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we just it just was happening at the same time, and I was kind of feeling people out. I was like, "So uh, what do you think about?" And and we got to the point where it was like, "Yeah." I I I, I kind of wish I was watching. I was like, no, I'm I'm recording it right now. Okay, good. Yeah, I found my people. People people like plan shit like that around football games. I I think they should. You know, in the next twenty years, they'll start definitely planning stuff around superhero events. <laughs> I think if it was ever going to happen, it would have happened around this one. Oh no, no. See, we're not we're not there yet. We have still got you know. And to be fair, your your wife is kind of one of those t- types of people who are just like, uh, are we really doing this about superhero? Yes, yes, we are. Uh, no, I mean she like she respects I think the general audience. The like normals are not quite there yet. She like she respects the scope of it as far as uh, the way I always present it is like storytelling wise. It was like these are the the modern Greek and Roman myths. Like these are. This is modern mythology. Like we're we're dealing with an entirely different form of storytelling, and and the the possibilities are fucking endless, and we're just getting to explore that now. Um, <laughs> like the old school, the the nineteen forties and even twenties really opened the door, mm-hmm. and I, a lot of people have. It's been a hundred years, but they're starting to really respect. Like, no, seriously, this is something I care about, and it's yeah. it's not a nerd thing anymore to care about that. I, I think it, it is still to some degree, but I think the general audience, there's still a big part of them who are just like, mm, no, nah, that's not a real thing that we're going to consider. I, I mean, I think it's also not becoming as weird to really invest in something that's like I the way I would describe crisis right now to someone who uh, I I haven't seen a moment of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would still tell someone that, like the way I've seen it. Crisis is the television experiences of our lifetime. Yeah. This point. Uh, yeah, and you told it's, your wife that and she was like, "Uh, no, there's elections and stuff." And you're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> elections may or may not fucking affect anything. This is real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is Brandon Rath playing the Adam. 
and Superman. You don't understand. This this affects things in a different kind of way. And and it's also kind of true. Like you realize uh, back in the radio serial days of Superman, like he literally helped decline the rate of attrition to clan membership. It it he it, and it was because there was somebody who actually like uh he was an investigative reporter and he got into the clan and he he was able to get in and get the codes and he also had a friend who was a producer of the Superman serials and they teamed up and the he was able to like the 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 kids who were listening to the Superman serials would like play Superman mm-hmm. so when later those same parents came home and their kids were playing Superman but they were also playing Superman in a way that like the it was like not cops and robbers but it was superman and and villain of the week and that villain of the week was a clan member who was like wearing a pillowcase over his head Uh and running around with a fucking uh and and he was running around giving like a you know this uh, super handshake a fake some fake looking handshake but that was also like they were giving out real codes like the the Uh actual (laughs) the actual codes the actual handshakes that the clan were giving out they infantilized the fucking clan using superman as a character to do so superman fucking took down the clan yep. fictional or not they used that brand to take down membership of the clan it like it declined several percentages it was like 30 to 70% down i mean it was genuine markup because like it was hard to go and and be super bigoted about like we, we're, uh, you know, we're we're the great race, and blah blah blah, and then go home and see your kids giving out this handshake that you'd invested so much in. Like it, it, it broke you yeah. as 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 someone who was invested so much in this and this narrative of we're the great race. So like you be... got home and your kids were the fucking villains running around in fucking yeah. pillowcases. Yeah, it it's, was stupid. It's got to be a nightmare for a KKK guy to come home and find their kids. Pretending to be a heroic illegal immigrant, <laughs> beating the crap out of Ku Klux Klan members. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah, but to my point, these stories matter. They they matter because they're the, uh, in a lot of ways, they're the zenith of what we're capable of uh, of as humans. And we're kind of, in a way, we're way past the the great bard's storytelling of the, the complications of of human uh, inclinations. You know, we're 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 past Shakespeare. We're past the Greek gods and in the the more like uh, clumsy storytelling kind of form of it. Mm. We're, we're past even like having to declare Dionysus as the 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 god of Greek storytelling in a way, so we could even get on a fucking stage to tell a story. We're we're past all that. We're past the idea that you could tell a story from two perspectives instead of a monologue. We're we're past all of that into some version where now we have the gods among us and we fucking just tell their stories and they walk among us in those fucking stories. Mm-hmm. It is an incredible new era of fiction. This matters. This I'm, is a big I'm, deal to yes, me. Yes, until you get on Twitter. And then fuck Twitter if they don't agree. <laughs> and then people are like, I don't think that God would wear that cape. Maybe not. Hashtag not own. my God. Go forth. Do your thing. <laughs> Which it makes sense. You know, people on Twitter argue about what? Religion, politics. Every and goddamn thing. Which are some strange amalgamation of the two. It, it Twitter's this bizarre pocket where in a few words you can... If it was down to binary, you could argue one zero, and the two would argue indefinitely one zero 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 one 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 zero. Mm-hmm. It's it's rough on there. It just is. I mean, it's it's because you don't have to actually extrapolate your point. You remember, like when we were growing up, and when every generation, including the same generation, I'm saying, I'm so I'm not doing the like kids these days thing. Mm-hmm. When we were growing up, as every fucking generation for the last few hundred years has grown up, you wrote. A five paragraph essay. Mm-hmm. Topic sentence. Topic. Three points. Conclusion. Mm-hmm. You still have to do that. Like that's still how you get through classes right now. You don't have to do that in two hundred eighty characters. Right. You you can just express some fucking bullshit expulsion, like some vomit of your fucking mind on 
on <laughs> Twitter and just say a thing. You don't have to back it up. I mean, yeah. and and even then, you can let the internet kind of worry this out for you and kind of like pull in. Uh, you can you can pull in a left hook here and there, like, oh yeah, yeah, that guy agreed with what I said and and like his tweet or whatever. And I have literally seen an argument. Someone used this as an argument. Well, you you only have eight likes. That's so. St- I, I I can't I I can't even I can't even with that. Like, get out of here with your eight likes. Like, like oh, it, intrinsic and extrinsic value at that point. If, if you don't understand those things, I don't know how to argue with you. I don't know how to talk to you. Yeah. You, I mean, was your argument valid? Were were your points valid? Were was your stance on human nature valid? These are these matter. I want them to matter. I, I want to live in a world where they matter. I feel like. And Twitter doesn't necessarily exclude that. You can still find nice things on it. You can. But it does also open itself. It it opens itself to, like, the, the idea that you can just pipe in and just have a hot take of 100 characters and just be on your way. And other people that just pipe in and don't want to explore a topic can just come in and be like, yeah, good job, retweet. <laughs> it it does, it because of its brevity, it has that flaw. Mm-hmm. It... <sighs> Yeah, you it know, it has a lot of uses. It Mark really Twain. Be- also because uh, because of its brevity, brevity, it can it can you can relate to a lot of people who also just be like, oh yeah, that's that's what's on my soul too. I I, I appreciate you saying that sentiment, but Mark, you, <laughs> Mark Twain said, brevity is the soul of wit, and I <laughs> I really wish I could like go back in time and just show like pull them forward and be like, hey, check out Twitter. Oh damn, yeah. Yeah. In a way, I think he would have owned Twitter. Oh, he oh he would have destroyed on Twitter. <laughs> he would have destroyed on Twitter, man. But I think he would have been a force for good, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, where he was like, he would use 120 characters of the 140 you were, 140 or 144 you originally given, and just knocked it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Like, nope, 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 nope. I, I know you've uh, you got thousands of tweets uh, uh, about this subject, but in in like seven words, I'm just going to sum this up for you and deal with it. Mm-hmm. He was really good at that. Oh, yeah. All right. I think we should go to break, man. Yeah, probably. And break. And we are back. Yay. All right, we're going to talk about these Star Girl teasers up front. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so DC uh, Universe put out this trailer, uh, this teaser trailer, and apparently I- I'm hearing, and I don't know for sure, but I'm hearing that it was like not that the first trailer, that the first teaser trailer was not um, given the go ahead, and it just kind of they put it out and. Uh, and then the internet blew up and said how awful it was and shitty it was. And it looks like shitty green screen with the kids standing in front of the locker. And how is, you know, not for any of us DC Universe fans. And Jeff Johns is a piece of shit. And we love Zack Snyder, etc. And I, they I'm... took it down. And then they put up a shortened one that was just minus that green screen segment. Having watched both of these. Uh-huh. My my whole take was roughly, I don't think I I've seen anything. <laughs> I mean, right? I just felt cheated by the idea that it was even a teaser. Right? I mean, Nothing we, happened. Like now, I liked the line where she says, uh, "The staff chose me, and I chose all of you." That was solid. Um, yeah, that was kind of cool. And um, I didn't like. I didn't feel like. The shot of them standing on the green screen against the cartoon lockers or whatever that was, I didn't feel like that was an actual thing from the show by any stretch. Like, I didn't feel like, like oh, the whole show is going to look like this. Um, it honestly felt like a uh, teaser that was pulled away just to do that. I feel like the the show lo- is going to look like the thing at the end, which looked fantastic with her with the staff glowing. Yeah, that looked fun. So... I don't know. Uh, I I just I don't get my panties in a in a twist. Right? You know, and I don't mean to be diminutive in a sexist way when I say panties. It could be underwear, whatever. I don't, I don't 
I don't know what's okay to say anymore. I would anymore. like to think you meant for you, you wouldn't be used to it. And that being twisted on top of you not just being used to it because you don't normally wear those. Right. He's uncomfortable and, and, and that's not what you were going for there. Whatever, man. You know, I grew up in a house full of wi- women. They all say panties in a twist. That's what I say. I know. I don't, it's just a phrase we're used to. I don't mean I it. it. I don't mean anything by it. Please don't I, hate it, me. I get it. I um, get it. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't, I don't understand. Like, I just don't understand the hate, man. Uh, it looks fine. It looks fun. I, I haven't been, I mean, I've genuinely avoided the internet because I can't see crisis right now. Um, <clears throat> but so I didn't get any of the hate, but I, I sure do not understand it when you're telling me it's out there. Yeah. It's just, you know, and I've been on genuine blackout. I mean, I literally deleted the icons off my phone. Just rabid, like foaming at the mouth fanboys just freaking out i don't understand yeah there's no call for that it's fine yeah and also not everything has to be for you it's also seven fucking seconds it's like yeah it's seven seconds It's nothing it is seven seconds things can be not for you though things can be not for me you know what's what isn't for me like the first three seasons of lucifer (laughs) <laughs> yeah and you know i've even had people like people that i i very much like like brent from fans without borders who says if you don't like a thing why do you continue to watch it and i say because of lucifer season four <laughs> you never no, know I'm, I'm, I when it's going to become a thing at the moment <laughs> actually you... burn notice is a good example for me of a show that like was always just entertaining enough but gave me just what i needed to, to tune in and and do the next one Burn Notice is fun. I enjoyed Burn Notice. I don't. I haven't watched every episode or anything, but you know, I watched it in succession live. I watched the entire series as it happened. If you're sitting and drawing, or you know, you I need... watched the pilot like four times because I uh, <laughs> got that uh, pre well screened anyway. I got that through some methods and watched it like four times before it fucking aired, and I, mm-hmm. I was super excited about it. Well, I mean, yeah, but you do, you do that. You had like a whole, before we, you know, lost all of our time to, to capes, sure. you, you had like several TV shows that you would just like play continuously. Oh yeah. I miss those days in some ways. And I, like, I really do like, uh, specifically bad shows for certain instances. Like we were just like running sci-fi's misfits and, <laughs> oh no, grim and shit like that. We were just like, Arr. Sci- uh, the British Misfit- Misfits was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, was that one of those where they did a British and a sci-fi? The, the one I was aware of was definitely British. And I, that was, I, was that Being Human? I was thinking about, well, I'm thinking about Misfits, but you're thinking about Being Human. Okay. The t- the, 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 the U.S. TV hum- uh, Being Human was awful. <laughs> yes. It's terrible. Um, yes. But you would have that shit on, you'd have Grimm on, and I'm just like, what are you doing? I know, yeah. That was an excuse for me to do something with my hands. Like, I would, uh, you know, play guitar or draw yeah. or something. And th- that, that, that was the whole point. That was my version of the thing you did with my music. Like, you would be watching some awful TV show in the background, and I would, like, walk into your room and be like, what is this dialogue I'm hearing? This is awful. What are you watching? And then any time I would play music, you would come in and be like, what the hell what is, is this? A it's Survivor. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Uh, All right, All right. <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna try to be as as non uh, as non spoilery as we as we can be for Crisis here. <sighs> Please uh, do. Kevin I Conroy, seen a damn second. Kevin Conroy says uh, that he hopes to be a part of the Arrowverse after Crisis. Yes, please. He says, wouldn't that be awesome? That would be so awesome. I was thinking that as I was doing this, that I'm kind of inhabiting old Bruce Wayne from Batman Beyond. He's not that old. Bruce Wayne in Batman Beyond is like 80. He's not that mm-hmm. old in this, but he is a lim- he is as limited in his ability to be physical in this. He's not fully able-bodied. In that sense, he's like old Bruce Wayne in Batman Beyond. And I was using the voice, actually, from old Bruce Wayne from Batman Beyond. Kevin, buddy, <laughs> I love you, but that voice started being the same like 20 years ago. Like his old yeah. Bruce Wayne voice is the same as his just normal Batman voice. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if he can do the like the the high pitch kind of it, it those like old Kennedy kind of notes yeah. on the up uptick. Yeah, go go back I and watch some of like do that. yeah, go back and listen to um 
to like old Batman animated series when he's just like, hi, commissioner. And then yeah. <laughs> now it's just like, all of it's just Batman. Like, that's <laughs> all he's got. He's done Batman he, like, for so he, long. He just, he's still voice... using the same notes in a way. Like, yeah. It, like he, he goes up and instead of like the hi commissioner kind of thing, like, oh, God, my voice seemed cracked. I can't do that. Yeah, but yeah, instead that of just right. going way high <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and staying <laughs> true to a note, he, it's kind of the like, hi commissioner. It, like, it's still just playing it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, possibly true. All right. So we're but gonna... I would like to see him going forward. That'd be Oh, a lot absolutely. Of fun. Yeah. And, you know, in that teaser or in that trailer or whatever we got, uh, you know, we see him coming down the stairs in his exoskeleton. Yeah. And uh, and Kate goes, Bruce? And he goes, Kate. So they, but we know that he looks like that in her universe, in Earth 1. Yeah. Has that visage, at least. Yeah. Yes, the, please. The, the exoskeleton also is something that uh, I think Dr. Steve from Winter Madison would be in approval of. Just the idea that he needs that. Yeah. <laughs> so when I, we talked to him, I, his prediction was like, oh, he'd last like six days and he'd be dead. I Yeah, I, I want to show I want to show that footage to Christopher Nolan and be like, now see, that's how you do it. <laughs> um, yeah. It's not a thigh slap bracelet that fixes eight years of deceleration. <laughs> and for Brent, it's not a leg belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark Guggenheim was asked if they had any more uh, big announcements coming before Sunday, and he says, huge one coming, and then uh, it didn't happen. Yeah. And yeah. Um, someone asked, could you tell us anything about the huge announcement, Mark? And he says, yeah, I can tell you that it's lo- now looking like January. Sorry, not my call. The powers that be would have pre- probably preferred I hadn't teased it, but I thought we'd be announcing it today. So if you guys only caught part of that... Uh, that's what that was about. And, or don't worry, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm inclined to believe him on this one. Someone like the, Although I've famously uh, called him a liar a few times. Yeah. The, uh, well, not famously, we're not that popular, but I have we, for sure called him a liar several times. Yeah, that's true. Through, uh, through conversation on Twitter, it was revealed that Guggenheim had, or has reached out to Nick Cage <laughs> he says we reached out to a lot of people and there were people who didn't want to do it there were people who would only do it for amounts of money that we could never afford and there were yeah. other people other people who really wanted to do it but couldn't for scheduling that was the case with a lot of it i have to say uh the movie stars that we reached out to the thing about movie stars they're all shooting movies and unless these movies are shooting in vancouver we're kind of out of luck but I have to say that the sheer number of actors that we did end up getting exceeded my expectation. Now, he didn't say that he did or didn't get Nick Cage yeah, to yeah. come back as Superman. Around it. That would be huge. Wouldn't it? That'd be so much fun. Wouldn't it? I'd be down. I mean, complete nonsense. I mean, they could wipe it away immediately and it would still be so much fun to have seen. Yeah. I mean, they got him to play Superman in the Teen Titans Go movie, for God's sake. Oh, it's true. It's also, it, he, he, I think Cage is one of those people who really invests in wanting to, uh, to be a person. Like, uh, he, he enjoys his roles. Yeah. And he, you know, from watching that documentary, he really seemed to want to do this. It oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't want to fucking do it? Mm hmm. Now, Mark Guggenheim was talking to IndieWire and he was asked, uh, are there any actors that will appear in the crossover that haven't been made public? He says the short answer is yes. The longer answer, they're working on even more that won't be shot until later in the year. Oh, he says I, I like to be right. He says I like how there are at least mm. at least six characters who appear in the first three hours that we haven't announced, and I'm working on even more for the last two hours. So we've obviously announced a bunch, but I really want the audience to be able to tune in and still be surprised. So there are surprises of of sorts that we've managed to keep secret and not without great difficulty, I will tell you. Again, I I I have called Googs a liar several times. I was so wanting him to be telling the truth right now. Mm-hmm. Now oh, I want that to be true. This is also exciting, and you're gonna need to write it down. Okay. There is a Crisis on Infinite Earths 100 page tie in comic. Written by Marv Wolfman and Mark Guggenheim. Oh, sweet. 
that uh, will be appearing on Walmart shelves. There are two different ones, Giant number one, 100 page Giant number one, and 100 page Giant number two. And uh, they're going to be available at Walmart first and then in the direct market. Mm-hmm. And they are going to uh, feature Felicity, Earth One, uh, let's see, Felicity, and uh, gosh, uh, it was um, Nissa Al Ghul, The Ray from Earth X, um, Wally West, all working with the, with the monitor. And uh, we do get to see that famous bit from the uh, original comics where Pariah uh, is forced to look at all the different universes being destroyed, except in this version, it's like, it looks like the new 52 universe. And then he also sees the old f- uh, 40s Fleischer Superman universe get destroyed. Uh, <laughs> I it, it they they they've put out previews for it. It looks pretty great. So you've got the original writer of Crisis writing with Mark Guggenheim, which he also co-wrote the uh, the Arrow episode of Crisis on Infinite Earths, by the way. Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, uh, it's it's exciting, and uh, they're filling in it. they're filling in gaps between the first and second hour of the uh, of the event, and um, uh, it it looks pretty great, honestly. We got Nissa, the Ray, Wally West, Felicity Smoke. We know where they are during the crisis and what they're doing. Yeah, that's that's a whole lot of fun. I'm yeah, I like to fill in the gaps instead of being just like a thing I was supposed to read that might or might not matter in a way. Yeah, yeah, but it but they said it is in lockstep with the with the you don't need it, but it is in lockstep with the with the uh, the crisis show. So you can. I will probably pick that up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. it, nothing against the comics i've never read them they they may be great but some of the stuff that's not truly connected yeah i've mm. never actually branched out and picked that up yeah but they're gonna do uh they may be phenomenal i, I really don't know uh, like i think 20 pages of the main story and then they're gonna have like little side stories kind of fleshing other things out that's cool yeah yeah just add some breath to the whole thing yeah, and uh, I'm excited about it. I was excited about it last night. Like, when I read about it, I jumped up and went and told my wife, and she was like, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. Can I go back to sleep? Actually, yeah, she was asleep, I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, going to be a thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to bed. <laughs> and she's excited about this stuff, so it's, you know. It's <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's see. I, I did have it marked. Where I don't know why I don't have it in, Anywhere where I can see it now. I think it's December 15th that it comes out at Walmart. Okay. It's the Walmart part, I kind of resent. I'm... I mean, it'll be in direct market later, but... Yeah, if it's lockstep, I'd like to have it, but... I don't know. It's it, probably easier to get that than the like the 100-page things that came out that were genuinely hard to find. Well, some of them are genuinely hard to find. Most of them are not. Most of them you can just show up and they're like, oh, there's like a million of them that no one bought. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that on a small scale on any comic book shelf, but yeah, December fifteenth. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure I'll wander near Walmart and I'll probably go in and grab it. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I go to Walmart every third day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> They're damn convenient in this area. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, nah, 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 nah. and you know, Guggenheim had a lot to say about uh, uh, Marv and his writing, but uh, mm-hmm. apparently he he writes an incredible John Cryer Lex Luthor. Oh, I could see that. And it looks like he's going to be doing, like, Council of Lex Luthors or something. Like, mm. <laughs> I'm just excited, man. I'm excited. That could be really good. All right. Harley Quinn. This is just a bit of fun. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently, <laughs> Kaylee Kuoko and Lake Bell, Harley and Poison Ivy, can't uh, record together. They said, hmm. uh, we don't record together. They, they told Entertainment Tonight. They said, there's often a fight. About who gets more F words. Kuoko said, did Lake take the last F again? Uh, <laughs> Justin Halpern and Patrick Shoemaker said, we were actually approached by Warner Brothers in 2016 or so. Got a phone call from the head of script and development there. And she said to us, how do you guys feel about developing an R-rated Harley Quinn show? We immediately said, yes, of course, as anyone would. It was sane. And then, yeah, I think that maybe they didn't quite expect the level of R rating. Maybe we were into the NC-17 territory with the violence and the objectionable language. Uh, they saw the first episode and they were like, wow, that's that's a lot of Fs in one episode. And, oh, it's unapologetic about that, yeah. And he said, by, by like episode two, we had 21 in there. 
21 F bombs in it. And that's basically a, an F a minute. And they were like, no, you got to put a cap on it. So we actually got like a number from them. I don't know if it was completely arbitrary or not, but the show still works with only like eight now. <laughs> uh, it's kind of telling in a way that they uh, still are self-referencing or uh, self-refereeing themselves. Mm-hmm. Because there's no ad service that's telling them this is like, no, there's no like censorship guy that comes in and says, oh, no, I, I need to, you know, see your five minute bit on the end of Conan before you perform it. None of that. Standards and practices. That's the term. Uh, yeah. I think they're just looking at it and going, yeah, yeah you're actively a lot of fucks. <laughs> like you guys are actively just making a poorer show because these characters aren't saying anything but that. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't. Usually the people who are counting F words, as they'll call them, are not the same people who have like oh, a... Oh, man. Not necessarily... See? Like, it's just like Larry David on Curb. He counts. Yeah. He counts. Oh, no. There are people that do both, for sure. But, but there are also people that are departmentalized for certain reasons. Yeah, there there is that. Uh, but, you know, Larry David feels like it will... Like, if, if you just go too crazy, then it's like... Eh, it's, it's deleterious. It loses its it loses its punch. It, it's not as Point funny. Of diminishing returns. Yeah, and you know it's just uh, you're just losing the clever. You just keep thinking you're going to get the laugh with the f bomb, and no, you need to say something funny for real. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. And if they're actually fighting over how I many f words they valid, get, but... yeah, they probably just needed to like they were probably ad libbing too much and throwing too much in, and they're just like, yeah, no. We don't need to do that. I mean, that. that that could be true based on the the backstory, but I also think like if the uh, I don't know if if the underbrush the like if if the forest bed of your story is we just don't care about how many fucks are in it, mm-hmm. then I'm not necessarily counting. I just know like oh these are just people who are uh, kind of tall like me in in normal conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, use fuck as a comma. I mean it it yeah if if. If that's just where you're coming from and it doesn't mean anything for the story and that's just the 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 plain white fucking milk toast background of that character, whatever. Yeah. Then I don't think counting matters. Right. And it's also just not like picking that uh I don't know, you're not reaching for it. That's just the background. Who okay. cares? Yeah, like I think I would have that same I would have that same reaction where I'm just like, okay, it's enough of that. Just same like if I like said, okay, we can do whatever we want. And then like my minions went off and started making a show. And then like every, like literally every minute of it was a poop joke. I'd have to go in and be like, okay. <laughs> it's just, we're leaning on this pretty hard. We've, we've got to. Let's pull back. We've got to. I'm so glad you're happy with a shit joke a minute, but we've got to pull back the other way. Some piss jokes, maybe. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I get it. I get it. Can we stop using like farts a as a comma? If... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things, if they lean too hard one way or the other, it's not clever anymore. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten to the second episode of Harley yet. I'm enjoying it so far, though. I I was able to watch like the first five minutes and enjoyed it, but I got more of the the uh, the faux Bane Dark Knight Rise. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a lot of fun. It's got a tone to him. I'm really yeah. enjoying. Yeah, I I think I may have pushed in that in that direction more. Just like actually made him a peanuts adult. More, 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 more. <laughs> no one understands what you're saying with that mask. Yeah. I want to see. Sorry, can you? I was born in the light. Burr, 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 burr. I want to see Bane with an intern. Yeah. And like Bane is doing the, the peanuts adult. No, everyone has trouble hearing him and the intern understands him perfectly. He says he will break you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's everything I've got, man. I like that or the idea of him, him like just being completely uh, sounding like an AM radio that's slightly mistuned the entire time. Mm-hmm. And then after, like, a lot of fussing and uh, suspense over the scene, somebody finally rips his math off, uh, mask off and starts to talk to him, and he sounds worse. <laughs> he sounds like a Burger King speaker box. Yes, exactly. 
Like one where clearly the employees know the box is messed up. They're just not going to acknowledge that because it has been a long fucking day and no one's going to have to fix that fucking box. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to be like, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, I can't hear you. What'd you, you know what, just pull up, sir. Just pull up. <laughs> Okay. Yep. I don't feel like this is going well. Let's just have a face-to-face. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Well, you want to call it? Yeah, let's call it. All right, well, thank you whatever your name is for listening to DC on screen. Remember, we're trying to get to that hundred uh, ratings. We've been, we've been around for almost five years. Come on. We got to get this done. <laughs> we have to at least name ourselves. <laughs> we should at least. After all na- this time. We, we got to name our fans and get a hundred ratings. That's what we've got to do. Cause we, we're about to hit the, in May, we hit the five year mark. New goals. Oh my gosh. We just dragging our asses on everything, man. Yeah. Um, Dragging her asses watching 72 hours of fucking DC yep. on screen a day. Yep, yep. All right, until next <laughs> time. A lot of stuff. Meh. Yeah. What, what do you think next time will be our review of Crisis, the first half of Crisis? It's got to be. I mean, that's what we're going to want to talk about anyway. Yeah, I would assume. I want to yeah. talk about it now. I can't. Not now. All right. <laughs> I, oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, until next time. Keep that DC on your screen. Our intro music is by Jason Goss and Michael Shackelford. Michael's band, Galactic Engineers of Magnetic Sounds, or GEMS, can be found on SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Visit DCOnScreen.com to find our Patreon, merch, contact information, and every episode of the show for free, including crossovers we've done with other podcasts. DC On Screen is a maladjusted production. For more from me and Jason, including sketch comedy, vlogs, parodies, and our improvised web series, Hey Guy, visit maladjusted.tv.